but I'm done now. We've got, do you not remember what happens at 1.30? <gasps> we gotta go get Steve! We gotta go get Steve! Let's go get Steve! Let's go get Steve. Okay. I'm glad you remembered. I was just like doing stuff, getting into the zone. I mean, you were cleaning, yes. which is important for what's gonna happen today as well. Cause we're doing more cleaning. Right. All right. Time for what? Cleaning time. Cleaning time? Yeah, we're gonna go pick up trash. Oh my gosh. I know! I Is was- it 1.30 already? It was, it's 1.30. I was cleaning in the other room and I was just like having such a fun time cleaning over there. <laughs> Chelsea had to come and get me. She got, you guys had to come get yeah. me. Well, I'm glad you did. Thank you so much. All right, where are we headed? Well, we're gonna head out front. Okay. We're gonna meet up with Bob and then all the other people from CES. And then we also have some transport friends oh, helping right, us too. Right, right. Oh, sorry, Chelsea. <laughs> like, sorry to <laughs> run into you <laughs> so we're gonna out front out front okay. yeah so we'll go out there i think we're gonna meet up with them they're gonna tell us what we're gonna do do you know what the plan is um well how about first we say hi to our friends right which one? Oh gosh here we are doing a <laughs> yeah. hey everybody hey. how's everybody doing today it's good to see you it's leslie uh, and steve <laughs> hanging out here in front of the camera and your zoo adventures for today yeah it's good to see who's you who's hanging out behind the camera chelsea it's chelsea again thank goodness chelsea's here today because we would have might have missed our whole thing i know we <laughs> we're super excited well, because we're still early. well that's good yeah it looks like we are early well that'll give us a couple of minutes oh, yes let's chat about what's going to happen today to yeah exactly hang out what we're doing so Today in Zoo Adventures, we're talking all about one of the kind of awesome service yeah. or, you know, volunteer service projects that we're doing, um, which is to go help clean up trash on the the highway. I mean, it's, yeah. it's I wouldn't necessarily call it a, like, you know, a big three lane highway. But it's that road coming into the park. So mm -hmm. we try to make sure that it looks nice and pretty for the guests that are coming in. Keep it up, kind of walk the walk, walk the talk, talk the walk, whatever yeah. you do. Um, show that, hey, look, we're part of this whole green challenge as well. Right, because though this is a taped episode, true, it is Earth Week. So oh, we're it, doing right this for, right. it is actually Earth Week this it week. It is Earth Week. So we are not just talking about the things to do. Like you said, we're going to walk the walk and go clean up, right? Yeah, I think so. That's for sure. Exciting. Um, speaking of cleaning up, however, I, I didn't grab my gloves. <gasps> I wasn't, wasn't quite ready. Listen, So what I was told yes. is that when Bob gets here, he has all the supplies for us. Our neighborhood Natchez is going to bring everything we need. He is, we know that. He just is so prepared because we clearly are not. <laughs> not today. <laughs> That's for sure. But what I heard is that he's going to come. We're going to split up into teams. Okay. And there's like a two, there's a two miles that we're covering. Two but miles? We're not walking two miles. Oh. We're splitting up teams. But I think we are going to do about a mile of, of a track, each team. Okay. Um, so we're going to split up those teams. One's kind of out in front over here okay. um, on the other side of the parking lot. And it'll go all the way down I'll to that iconic oh, elephant the statue. Where the, where, the, where, the buffalo, where the elephants are. <laughs> where the buffalo are. <laughs> where the elephants are. Okay, yeah, the four huge bronze elephants. Right. And then the other team, which I think might be where we're going, is kind of on off park a little bit more around the corner down to oh, okay. that the new pretty cool rotary that they have down there. So they have a nice little fancy rotary in the mm -hmm. bypass. Rotary roundabout mm -hmm, kind of with stuff. traffic circle, how would you ever So we're not going it? to the bypass. No, we're not going we're to the bypass. We're going the other way from the bypass. Okay, cool. Yeah. And Good. then he'll give us all the supplies that we need, including trash bags, gloves, and then the fun picker upper thingies. We do have little fun picker snaggy thingies. I'm super excited. Have you done this before, Chelsea? Uh, not uh, not with the zoo. So I'm excited to do it with the zoo. Very cool. Me awesome. too. Well, let's see if we can hang out and wait for them and I think excited so. to get it started. I agree. Guys, check out what we pick up. Digital guys, this is so cool. I'm on a bus. And I'm on a bus with a lot of my colleagues. Watch this. Hey, conservation, education, and science team. Every wave at the camera, please. Yes. We're actually going to go do a road cleanup. So we're going to walk the walk a little bit. We're going to get out there and do some fun stuff while we're out and about. So we've got our fancy jackets on. We've got some gloves over here. Um, I've got grabbers. We've got bags. We're going to pick up recycling and trash along the road 
coming in to North Carolina Zoo. We'll be talking to you a couple times and we're gonna see what a couple of these folks think about that as well. Check this out. There's a little piece. I don't know what that is. Ooh, candy wrap. We found all kinds of cool stuff here. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, what's up? What's up? Emily found some aluminum. Emily found what? Aluminum. I don't oh, yeah. Know, but I don't want to put it in the trash bag. Should we? Good about? exchange, Emily. Thank, Thank you. you. That's fantastic. We, what if we make a whole thing for recycling and then. Do we have, do we have one? Do you have an extra bag? Well, yeah, my bag's not really full. Cool. Let's do that. That's so cool. Thank you. Good. Amazing make, teamwork. That is so will cool. Make it easier at the end. Have you guys, have you done this before, Emily? You guys meet up. Say hi to Emily, everybody. Hi, everyone. No, they're saying hi to you, not hi, you. Hi, everyone. Oh. No, you're saying hi to them. Oh, okay. Is that right? She pushed to say hi to them? <laughs> okay. Well, all right. That worked. <laughs> I think so. We were out earlier and Emily says, is this Sue Adventures? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Let's see where you're going. Give back a. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Give them my grabbers. So have you done a cleanup before, Emily? I, not, never in my life. Really? Yes, this is my first one, and I'm very good at it now. So, you can good. tell, I just passed it off to you. So the yeah. conservation education and science <laughs> takes your first one. And I know you've done some. I think I did one a long time ago. Really? This is the first one I've done in a while. So. I think it's cool that we have to do it as a team. It's exciting to kind of like all get together. And we were just having, like we were with Bob, and we were just having conversations that like, you know, we can't like normally have mm. during work. But since we're picking up a, uh, litter right. and and um well all litter but i was gonna say and recyclables but it was all litter uh <laughs> it's kind of a, a neat bonding experience it is. too because we're kind of just able to talk about whatever we want to talk about and while he, we're doing this he set up a question right did he right. say you guys same same question he said if you had your favorite vacation what was the question exactly it was like what do you consider Are to your, be a superior su or he right. said Superlative. He, superlative. He used the Bob word. He uses a better word than me, but <laughs> a what superlative a superior vacation. superlative vacation. What is it? So and, that's our question for everybody right. now, right? And this is our CES. This is our staff meeting every day, every for, for this week. Out and about, cleaning up right outside the zoo's entrance. So it's kind of neat. Kind of fun to be able to share. Toy, what was your superlative vacation? I can't remember. You said no, you wanted to go. No cell phone. No cell phone. That's what it was. <laughs> I knew it was something kind of fun and exciting. <laughs> All right, well, Chelsea, since Chelsea's holding a camera, let's get everybody back to work. What do you oh, think? Back to work, Chelsea. Back let's to go. work, Chelsea. All right, fine. <laughs> See you in a little bit. Oh, so awesome. It's a neighborhood naturalist. Yes, in his na natural state, picking up trash and cleaning the world. He looks awesome out there. That's neighborhood naturalist Bob. Mm -hmm. Did you see? Now, friends, do you see the, the warning coloration that he has as a neighborhood naturalist and trash picking up her person as is at this point in time. I don't I think that's awesome they, though. Yeah. That the warning coloration is almost opposite. It is the it opposite is, of Don't the, come here. Do not I do not want to camouflage. But I guess it's kind of the same thing. So don't come here, don't hit me. Yes, yeah, I would I say think, that's so that's probably kind right. of the same warning. <laughs> like, look at us! Oh, that's right. What are we thinking? <laughs> But Bob, thank you so much for organizing this neighbor, this cleanup for everybody for the CES group. It's awesome that you're on our team. Let's go catch up with them. Okay. Steve. What? There's multiple yeah. cans down here. Okay. So can you help me with an assembly line? Whoa. I I know, because I don't want too many people to come down here. It's a little dangerous. You are a little down the hill there. <laughs> okay, sure, yeah, I can uh, help. So I'm gonna hand you off some in there. Aluminum. I have the recycle can bag. So, can one. Can one, okay. Can two. I'm not very good at this. That's okay. Teamwork. Yes. All right. Team work. And I'll say that earlier, Digital Friends, she had found another can earlier that I dropped. Let me grab that one. Right. Chelsea, have you been part of one of these before? Have I what? You been part of a cleanup before? Um, I have with my church, but never with the zoo. Oh, nice. All right, I have, now I just have trash. You have trash. I need a different bag because we have two different, we have different bags here. A recycle bag and a trash bag. That'll make it easier so we don't have to deal with that later. Yep. Neighbor Ned, our neighbor at Natchez Bob does some sorting anyway, but if we can kind of pre-sort, it's a little bit nicer. Anything else fun and exciting down there? Let's see, we're down the valley. There's a pretty creek back there. So one of the cleanups, that's really important to think about. Cleaning up around the creeks, around the natural spaces, where a lot of wildlife live. And being very careful when you do it. 
and you're not going to fall, right? No. All right. I'm going to use my support. I can be your support. I'm going to need it. Right, Here we go. Take that first. I got it. Okay. Teamwork. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Woo! Yes! <laughs> we did it. Teamwork makes the dream work. Continuing the road cleanup. I'm nice happy. job, Leslie. I'm very happy because I don't think I could have let all those go. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fantastic work by the CS team. Let's continue. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, people, friends, all digital guests that are watching, that is a volunteer coordinator making a big difference for wildlife and wild places. This is Toy, and everybody's chipping in today, the entire conservation education and science team. And I should tell you, there's two other teams out and about working on the roads around here. So it's awesome, Toy said she's going down to the valley, that's where Leslie was earlier, because she wanted to get some more trash. Toy, we are so happy you're with us today. Good stuff. <laughs> this is an amazing group of people. This is conservation education and science all put together, going out to try to make a difference for one mile up the road, another mile down the other road, and a mile coming into the entrance. So this team just took care of three miles of trails. And let's see if we can uh, get everybody hollered. Hey, CES, CES. Over here real quick. Great job today, guys. How about all the way for our digital guests? That is your conservation education and science team. All right, I'll tell you what. We're getting ready to uh, get ready to break here because it's right there. Fun day. Bob, you worked us crazy today. No, I didn't. No, 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 no. Mile that no. way, a mile uh, that way, a mile that way. Yeah, it's just uh, sometimes uh, the best things we can do. Oh, by the way, howdy, everybody. Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist here. Uh, sorry, I have we to We introduced you earlier. You didn't know oh, that, but we've already introduced you once. <laughs> no worries, we had no fun worries. With you. <laughs> no, I, I was going to say, sometimes people ask me, and usually it's about this time of the year, we often wonder, you know, what's the best way to... Uh, uh, protect habitats. And a lot of times we don't think about the things that we, we could do that are pretty simple and basic because it's dirty. Right, right, right. And uh, if, if uh, Chelsea takes a look over there in the back of the truck, you'll see the junk that we just uh, brought back up. That's a whole bunch of stuff that came from uh, the side of the highway. So that's from our cleanup just now. All of that is from our cleanup. Oh, yes. Yes. And we had, I don't know how many people we have. How many people we have? Did you count? There's about 12. 12 plus, of us. Plus our, our us chauffeur and, and had a couple, had a couple drivers. Yep. Thank you, transportation, for that, for driving yep. us down. Our transport guys are incredible. This yeah, is uh, one of the neatest things uh, that they've been able to do is to uh, help us when we do adopt the highway cleanups yep. and things like that. Get from here to, to down to the cleanup site and it keeps everybody together. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Thank yep. you them for sure. And then it was nice to have the conservation team together, the education team together, Absolutely. everybody there kind of doing that thing. But explain a little bit to our digital friends okay. why that cleanup is so important. Well, there, there are a number of reasons, num not the least of which. Um, it's trash, and that's largely what we're picking up. And so there are any numbers of different types of things we find. For example, um, one of the things we'll get a lot of are aluminum cans. Yeah, we found some. Aluminum cans in and of themselves, in the environment, they're pretty inert. They're not going to be poisoning things unless they have something bad in them and stuff like that. But they are an eyesore. Mm. It's also a lot less, it's a lot more energy efficient to take those cans, recycle them and make new cans out of right, them right. than it is to dig the ore out of the earth refine it, process it, make a can out of a first-run product. And we should tell these guys that's what, that's what we're going to do. Right? Yes. We're going to be able to take that material back and recycle that aluminum that we just discovered. Absolutely. I'll be sorting through most of those bags to make sure that there's not stuff in there that we don't want to discard. So that's one reason. Another reason is that any a lot of what we find are food packaging products. That's, we saw so much of that. It can Chelsea be, was talking about, I'm sorry, Bob, Chelsea no. about how much, how many Bojangles type things you found. And, how many cups of this and, and wrappers from that? Well, we'll pick on uh, just that first one. I'm not picking on Bojangles. No, no, no. It's, it's, they didn't put it, it there. It. They didn't put it there. No, they didn't. No, um, but one of the things about those, those bags had food in them. And chances are they have grease on them. So they smell very food-like. Ah, uh, good point. Now, if you happen to be a raccoon or an opossum or a small rodent, 
Uh, to you, that's going to be like somebody just delivered something to your home. We all they know dropped COVID it in front of you. Is important. So as uh, if you're an opossum, if you're a raccoon, and you go out and you start eating from that, chances are you're going to put yourself in da in harm's way. You're going to be out where you can get hit by Good a car. Point. Great point. So one of the things we often say is that uh, inappropriately placed litter attracts wildlife, and it puts it in a place where that particular wildlife can get injured. Yep. And so those are that's that's another one of those bad items. Yeah, I was going to mention. You guys, if you, some of you may have seen the advent, Zoo Adventures on Braveheart, and we talked about mm -hmm. some of those types of things with animal. We showed you an animal that we believe may have been struck by a car on by, at the road. So, well, that's what happens with the food packaging, especially. Yeah. Is even at night, uh, small animals, right, uh, mice, uh, voles, and things like that will come out, and they'll be eaten from those. Sure. Well, birds have figured out, especially hawks, owls, and various other raptors have figured out easily enough that that's easy hunting. Why? Yep. Because the grass is usually mowed on the shoulder so that it's low, you have yep. decent visibility. And the problem is, is if you're a hawk, a red-tailed hawk, if you're a barred owl, chances are when you've come down and you've captured your prey, when you take off with it, it adds just that extra weight. So instead of taking off at a nice sharp angle like this, when you start gaining altitude, you take off at a very shallow angle like this. Yep. So it means often you're flying where you'll hit cars. Yep. So that's another reason. Yep. So on a, on a, a typical, I guess it's not what it's a typical mm -hmm. cleanup, mm -hmm. what are some other types of things that people see? We saw the tires, talked about aluminum, talked about some food wrappers. What other kinds of material might we find out there? The uh, next two very popular ones that we find a lot of. Did you find any cigarette filters today, Steve? I found a lot. Chelsea was actually commenting on that. She yep. found tons of them out there. Cigarette filters, for whatever reason or another, uh, people who smoke often tend to just throw them out the window. It can cause problems. Uh, they do still have the heat and the fire on one end, so that can start fires. That's a great point. Not only that, but the filters themselves trap poisons. They keep from getting into your body when that's what the filter does. So what does it filter? It filters nicotine, which is highly toxic. It filters arsenic, yep. which is highly toxic. It can filter cyanide, which is highly toxic, not only to people, but also to animals. Sure. It can trap lead, cadmium, any number of elements. One cigarette filter, if it blows or if it washes into, we passed several creeks along the way. Yeah, we did. Any of those cigarette filters get into that water, there's probably enough toxins in one filter that uh, it can render between one to 10 gallons of water unlivable for fish, frogs, tadpoles, and things like that. So one one cigarette filter can can poison up to a 10 gallons of water? Up to, yeah. And didn't you tell me that that one filter is oftentimes just one, it's a, it's a piece of plastic essentially, real thin, kind yep. of pulled out? Yeah, the filter itself, the, the filter medium is a real, real fine fiber of cellulose acetate. Right. It's, a, it's an absorbent plastic. It's made from wood cellulose and uh, things like that. But it, and it does its job. But it, yeah. in any given cigarette filter, there can be up to 10,000 individual fibers in that bundle. 10,000? Well, get this, Steve. Remember, when I talk about plastics a lot, plastics don't break down. They break apart, so the filter will fall apart. You'll have hundreds of thousands of tiny little pieces right. of plastic. It gets in the water. It stays suspended in the water. We yep. can eat it. We can drink it. We never know we're taking it in. And that's what's called microplastic pollution. Yep. And that's another reason. It's easier, it's easier if the stuff never landed on the side of the road. Right. We're, we're a Band-Aid going out and picking it up. I like the way you say that. Even the, but even being that band aid, yep, it's still a pretty important thing. It is. It it's is. someone get out there and, and make an action, do something, put something in place that we're making a difference at least for these two or three miles mm -hmm. within the area yep. as you're coming in. And maybe we're demonstrating, maybe we're kind of walking the walk, maybe we're mm -hmm. showing that we practice what we talk about here at the North Carolina Zoo, especially when it comes to sustainability mm -hmm. and green practices. Steve, here's something to think about, and I'm going to challenge you on this. I'm so, ready. All right. So, if you go out there, if we go out and say, oh, it's a mile south, it's a mile north, we're not going to make a difference in this piece of property. Let's talk box turtles. Yeah. How far does a box turtle go move in its entire life? They should know. Oh, give them a second. You guys may know if you've watched some of the shows, you may have seen. Put it in the comments. Put it in the Q&A. 
What's the limited, what's the range of a box turtle? Does anybody remember? If nothing else, can you tell me if it's huge or is it small? So if you don't know the range for sure, you think a box turtle's range is huge or is it tiny? We'll wait. I'm feeling some mental telepathy again. Okay, what do you, what's the answer? What are, you, what are you feeling, Chelsea? I'm feeling like they're mentally telling me that it's about a mile. A mile. Bob, is the mental telepathy working today? Yeah, that's, that's right on it. Wow. So most of them never move more than 100 yards from the hole in the ground where they have That's a football field, ladies and gentlemen, friends and, and colleagues. A football field is their range. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Number one, if we don't put food that's going to attract a box turtle out, and they're omnivores, they can absolutely they can eat the, the, the that tomato you didn't want on your hamburger. You threw in the bag. You threw the bag on the side of the road. That could do in a box turtle. Box turtles are, in some cases, they're uh, agents of dispersal. They yep. can carry fungal spores from place to place, absolutely, to, place to help break down that wood and uh, various other debris in the forest. Yep. So that's actually a really good thing. So um, what they do. But you know, if they only travel 100 yards, in a mile there are 1,700.6 uh, uh, 1,700 uh, yard segments. Yep. And that means that that could have been potentially 17 individual box Handful turtles on either side of the road that were not tempted to go out and cross the road because of what we did today. And I love, I love you said it before, and I think it's very well, very well worth repeating. It may not matter to everybody. Yep but it's going to matter to that animal. Mm -hmm. And that is what this is all about. When it really comes right down to it, are we going to impact everybody? Nope. But can we make a difference for an animal or two, a space or two, an area or two? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if we can do it, if you can do it, Chelsea can do it, why not do it? So that's a challenge, and I accept that challenge. Try to make sure to get out there and make a difference for wildlife. And that's one of the big things is that, uh, you know, I, uh, I I say this in all honesty that uh, once in my life I spent 10 days in Africa. Mm -hmm. And in those 10 days, at no point did I ever have the opportunity to stand between an elephant and a poacher. At no point. point did I have the opportunity to uh, protect any habitat where lions are likely to live or leopards. I was there for a completely different purpose. Where I live is right here in Randolph County. And where I live in Randolph County, I can make a difference to those box turtles, to those Absolutely. possums, to those raccoons, to those small animals that sometimes are seen as either in, in, insignificant or even, uh, what, would, what would we call them sometimes? Pests? Pests, verminish yes, kind of things. But still, yeah. they've got a role. But they have a role, exactly. So by uh, doing that, basically, I'm engaging myself where I am. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Absolutely. If it's your house, you don't have to do it at work. You can do it at your home. Yep. This is one thing we can all do that makes everything a lot better. I love that, Bob. Thank you so much. And Neighborhood Naturalist Bob, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for organizing today's cleanup for the Conservation Education and Science Team. Chelsea, thank, thank you, you for, for taking... coming out and cleaning up. Oh, you're very welcome, Bob. Happy <laughs> to do it. And to our digital guests, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, do you want you to guys. mention? Do you want to mention how they can get involved on their own? You got. You have an easy one. Uh, well, you know, one of the things. If you've got something, yeah, we'll, we can continue that. What do you got? Thursday of this week is Earth Day. So April twenty second. Because remember, this is taped, so we I don't know when this is going to air for sure. And I'm not sure when this one's going. Yeah, we're not 100 sure either. But April twenty second. April April twenty second is Earth Day. Um, it's possible that you can find, we're actually going to be giving away a bunch of clean up your neighborhood kits, which is a set of grabbers, some bags, some gloves. You can get grabbers oh, giving it away. Wow. very inexpensively for under $5 at several different locations around. It keeps you from having to touch stuff with your hands and it's a great way to do it. In my neighborhood, people often, if, if the garbage man comes and he lifts up the can and dumps it, something falls out. People are not really good about wanting to go out and pick stuff up because it's messy. If you have your own grabbers, you can do it right then. I love it. That's great. Great point, Bob. Thank you so much for that. And something else you guys can be able, be able to do. All right. So Zoo Adventures on Wednesdays, moving forward, as we said earlier, 10 o'clock. Well, we can't look forward to see, can't wait to see you again down there. Can't, are looking forward to seeing you, something like that. We can't wait to see you again on Zoo Adventures. And hopefully one day, you may get into the North Carolina Zoo itself. Y'all stay safe. Make those time tickets if you're coming in. Check those reservations. Get your slot filled as you can. Let the gator go by.
and we'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody.